Pre-order the Clownfish TV comic book right now on Indiegogo. Go to clownfishtvcomic.com. That's clownfishtvcomic.com. This is a fun collection of all new comic strips based on dumb stuff we've said on the show. Again, that's clownfishtvcomic.com. You're going to have to hurry. We're only taking pre-orders for a limited time. Now we're going to get back into the show. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkle. Hello. And we're going to talk about Marvel. We're going to talk about the casting couch. We're going to talk about the Lawrence brothers and all those things are entangled. Apparently. An uh, entanglement. Yeah. entanglement. No, it was an attempted entanglement. An attempted entanglement. So uh, before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Uh, you'll get a woohoo if you do. Woohoo! Uh, thank you very much. Go out to clownfishtv.com for objective news, as well as piratesandprincesses.net, objective Disney news. And yeah, this is kind of a shocking development here. This is uh, Matthew Lawrence, one of the Lawrence brothers. Right. I, I think there's like 19 of them now. Well, there's three, and they do a podcast. Yeah. Um, and they do it together. And it was during this podcast that he talked about the time that he was up for a Marvel role, but he didn't want it to roll the way the director wanted him to, to get the role. Yeah, the director apparently wanted to roll in the hay. He wanted uh, something. He wanted to take his clothes off for Polaroids and then X, Y, and Z, whatever that means. He wanted to X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Wow, he wanted to- well, uh, we'll read his quote in a bit. Size him up for the spandex, I guess. Yeah. Is, is what we're, we're talking about We here. don't use tape measures anymore. We just take pictures. And then I have to, I have to measure you from certain angles inside to make sure that it's, you know, the spandex is gonna fit. Yeah, so. Yeah, it's a podcast, a brotherly love podcast, and it features the three Lawrence brothers. Um, you know, Joey, Matthew, and Andy Lawrence. What is Andy Lawrence saying? Cause I, I know Joey- uh, He from, looks familiar. Yeah, Joey from Blossom, Matthew from Boy Meets World, Andy I'm not familiar with, but I probably would know. Uh, he looks familiar though. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, so I watched the clip with you a little bit of it, and he's just kind of like, I mean, I, I kind of love these Hollywood podcasts, uh, especially with, uh, the folks that aren't like like the A-list actors because they're being real. Like I, mm -hmm. I love uh, Michael Rosenbaum's mm -hmm. podcast. He just talks and they're just people. They're just talking. He's just kind of like, yeah, oh yeah, by the way, you know, I yeah. take my clothes off for a Marvel role. And he was talking about how the casting couch is a real thing. Yes. And he said it, he's been part, he, part of conversations. There are people that empower talking about why they cast a girl and, and things that they've done and that kind of stuff. And he said, well, we all know about it. We all been a little bit complicit in it because we knew about it. He said, but a third of the time you don't hear about is it's men, whether it be a female person in power or a male person in power. It's men who get a, a, a assaulted, a, you know, sexually harassed as well. And the thing is, and you don't hear that in the Me Too movement, which we have mentioned numerous times, that men get attacked as well. But the thing is, you only hear about women or when it's a dude, it's like, go you or, you know, they just step over it or they don't address it. And we saw this happen with Brandon Frazier. Yes. That's the first thing I thought of. Yeah. Uh, George Takai, whatever happened with that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just... Cure it because that was a whole thing that came up and then it just like disappeared. I mean, uh -huh. look, I, I like Star Trek, but I'm just saying that was that was something that just kind of got swept under the rug. Now, had I think Sulu been more conservative ish, personal opinion, I think they would have got him canceled. For Probably. Yeah. You know. But, you know, yeah, this went away and they're talking. Oh, even the guy that, that did, uh, you know, fondle Brandon Frazier and do inappropriate things that made him sick to his stomach and felt like a child, he said. Um, got to stay in charge of the uh, Foreign Press Association until like he until oh, yeah, he until right. the Black Lives guy. Matter thing. Yeah, then they guy. got him ousted. But yeah. before that, they basically let him just stay, even though you know he made he came out and said, well, "Here's what happened." They didn't check into it or anything. They just let it go. Yeah. You know, if it had been a woman, I bet they would have done something. And 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 there is a definite um, disparity between men and women how they're treated in regards to sexual assault, which is not okay. So here is what he said on his podcast. He said, uh, there, there's been many times in my life where I've been propositioned to get a huge role. I've lost my agency uh, because I went to the hotel room, which I can't believe they would send me to, of a very prominent Oscar award winning director who showed up in his robe, asked me to take my clothes off and said he needed to take Polaroids of me. And if I did X, Y, and Z, I would be the next Marvel character. I didn't do that, and my agency fired me because I left this director's room. Now I'm trying to trying to figure out who 
this would be. Now, this could be pre-Disney Marvel. Yeah, we don't know. This could honestly be X-Men. Uh, I mean, if we're talking Marvel character, Brian Singer. Oh, yeah. Wasn't, I, I don't know who it is. He we don't did not know. He did names. not say, but that Brian tracks. Brian Singer was, you know, he was in charge of the X-Men movies. And Brian Singer, I'm shocked, again, talking about this, that he has not been canceled yet because there have been allegations for years that, Right. You know, we don't know it's him, though. But I'm just saying that yeah. that one tracks, actually. So, yeah, before he talked about what happened to him, specifically, he was talking about the casting couch and how it's, everybody in Hollywood knows about it. And it's not just women. It's, like, it's a real thing, the casting couch. We all know it existed. We all have been somewhat complacent in a way towards it. But the one thing that is very interesting that doesn't get talked about enough in the Me Too movement is how it's the two-way street. And he says three or four-way street, too, but I didn't add everything. Ooh. He continued, not a lot of guys, in my opinion, have come out and talked about this in the industry. There is also this, the same situation. But granted, it's like a third of what women go through. Men go through this as well, whether it's another m woman in, or man in power. Yeah. And, and, you know, and I guess I didn't watch all the thing, but Joey Lawrence even said, he said, yeah, he's been in situations where he's been put in situations similar and he stuck with his principles and he, he didn't get major roles in movies because he wouldn't do the same types of things. So how many of these actors in Hollywood, in X-Men, in, you know, Marvel and whatever, you know, had to do some questionable things to get their shot, which is absolute garbage. Well, I, I just want to disgusting. I want to bring this up real quick because the Victoria Alonso thing. Now, again, we don't know. Now, she's been with Marvel since before Disney, or mm -hmm. she was with Marvel. She got fired. She said she had some pretty damning information on Marvel if it went to court about the way the Marvel Studios operate. Now, I don't know what she was talking about in particular, but she said there was some immoral stuff going on or whatever, and that if it went to court. Uh, she would dump everything, and then all of a sudden they paid her off and made her go away. I don't know if the two things are interconnected. If entangled. <laughs> if they're entangled, I have no idea. Um, but she might – I mean, it is possible that if this was still going on, that – especially on Disney's watch, that she would just be like, oh, yeah, and by the way, this director did this, and this director did that, and this director did this. And, wow, that's not a good look for you, Mickey. Well, I'm very concerned about the fact that um – you know, this is going on and it's still going on. And we knew about like the, the, like the, the Harvey Weinstein situation and all that. And the casting couch thing has stories have been around for years, but I am, I am rather, I mean, I'm disgusted about all of it, but I, it really upsets me that there are these men that are coming out. We know what happened to the, um, supposedly happened to the Corey's, the Corey Heyman, Corey Feldman back in the, in the eighties and nineties. Yeah. And they things were passed like, around like yeah. freaking bong. Over right. The and there's a lot of kids like we know, um, what the one kid from Stranger Things, Finn, was it Finn Wolfhard's parents? Yeah. His parents actually, yeah. So, um, he was with one agency and, his parents actually pulled him out of the agency because I get I guess it was pretty much an open secret that that, that agency passed the kids around Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And they're like, hell no. But then what will be interesting to see is if the careers of kids that stayed with that agency take off more so than – his what? But I mean, this is like the worst kept secret. Not, oh my God, Pedro is. I know, bad. but it, it's, it's. But I don't care if it's a worst kept secret. It shouldn't be happening. I mean, it shouldn't be happening. And even if it's not just that, even if they're adults, you shouldn't be coerced into that. And then makes you look at everything differently with Hollywood when you're seeing these celebrities, you know, standing on the red carpet and everybody's kissing their ass and taking pictures. And you see people go off the deep end and then they, they die from like drugs and stuff. And you kind of like, well, why, I wonder where that came from. Ten to one, it probably came from something like this. It's it, and especially if it's a guy because they are not. Given the same um, opportunities for, you know, I don't say vengeance, but like, you know, to be able to be, you know, come out and say, here's what happened and be accepted for it as women are. And I've been saying this for years. I mean, not beyond directors, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Everybody believed Amber Heard immediately. And then when you actually get a chance to see the evidence because it was televised, and everybody gets the evidence, not just the court and the media that she can, yeah. you know, her PR people controlled. You're like, oh, shit, you know. She was kicking, there's all kinds of proof that she was beating him, cut his finger off, everything else. Yeah. You know, and the courts found that, that it was, it was, there was enough evidence to say that too. And it, you never heard about, you only heard about her side and how she was abused. And the makeup company even came out and said, we didn't even have that compact out that you're claiming you covered your bruises with until after the situation. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, look, and the thing with men, it, you know, coming forward with that is, especially if it's women doing it, it's like, you're a pussy, basically. You're mm -hmm. you're like if you 
let some woman control you and, you know, make you do stuff, you know, you're what the hell? Like, what kind of a man are you to be able to? Yeah. You know, and these people, these people in power just think they can do whatever the hell they want. And apparently they called his agency up and got him fired because he didn't do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. So that might be why you're not seeing as much of uh, Matthew Lawrence as you were. Now, he was on uh, Girl Meets World. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm again, I'm trying to figure out who it is. And I can only think of a handful of people. And Yeah, the one you mentioned the actually one I makes mentioned a lot of sense. Has in, don't know if that's it. We don't, do, not, do not know. Do not know. But if I had to put the pieces together. If you had to guess. Um, I would say that, that that particular person has had a, uh, a problematic, his, problematic history, and I'm very surprised that particular person has not been arrested. I mean, canceled, canceled. Already, yeah. Yeah. arrested. Um, yeah, no, there has been, there has been. Um, you keep hearing these stories, and Hollywood is a, a giant fucking trash fire and it has been for years and this is nothing new. These stories have been going on since like the 30s, the 40s. Yeah, yeah, it's the worst. I mean, it's any. Industry, it's just more, I think, because we're dealing with larger sums of money. There's more at stake. And, you know, at the end of the day, like, people are going to do what they're going to do to get that role, to do that. And there have been other stories. I mean, there were some other stories circulating uh, recently about, you know, younger actors being expected to, to do stuff to get roles. And yeah, no, it's like it was a worst kept secret. Like everybody and knows there's pedos in Holly, Hollywood and there there there's a casting. And if there are kids yeah. and these pick, and things are happening to these kids and the parents are letting it happen, those parents, I, I, I what the fuck? You know, no pun intended. But I'm no. just like, you know what? It's your job to protect your kids, not whore them out. Well, that's like I, um, I was thinking what about Brooke Shields. Well, she actually didn't sleep with anybody. She went to college, apparently. No, but the thing is, is like I, I'm sitting here thinking, like, what the hell parent would let their daughter play a oh, child yes. prostitute? What was she like twelve years Make old? Make out with an adult, you know? You yeah. know, I'm like, come on. Then she's like, you know, practically bare ass naked in uh, Blue Lagoon, and then you know she's doing all the sexy Calvin Klein. Well, to be fair, the Blue Lagoon, both the actors have come out and said that they were told one thing, and then she, that, that if they did this, it would be handled in a certain way, and then it wasn't. It, it was soft core porn. Yeah, and they was. were they, was, they were told something different, yeah. allegedly, than what actually they were forced to do. Yeah, um, that, allegedly. So that's one of the things that are being. Um, are being one of those court cases in California had to file by the end of last year. That's one of them, I think. Well, back to the, the Corey's like, you know, Corey Haim, I, I think the reason he had the drug problems he had, which led to his death was because he had to deal with the trauma of, mm -hmm. of getting passed around Hollywood. And, and then your and, parents supposed to protect you. And parents you... supposed to protect Well, okay. So Jeanette McCurdy, um, my son was actually reading her book. Oh, the, her, yeah. My mom's dead or something. Yeah. And her mom. I'm happy my mom's dead. I'm happy my mom's dead, which is like, ouch, that is brutal. But that turned out that her mother, I guess, Kind of hoard her out and let Dan Schneider do whatever. Because, really? Yeah. That well, was in the book? Not like like that, but like, hey, you know, if Dan asks for you for, to be in a bikini, you should do it. If he wants feet pics. Okay, you, you better get, clarify that, yeah. You get, but basically she you was – She was – well, yeah, he was – she basically was told to do whatever Dan Schneider wanted to keep the money rolling in because her family was like living off of her income, you know, and that's why she was so – just disgusted by it. So, the, yeah, it was – I mean, there's so much garbage going on. You and wonder why these kids, these child actors end up the way they do. Yeah. You know, I'm not, and that's not every case, obviously. No, You can't no, no. say that's every case. But I, I'm sure a lot of the cases have something to do with that because it's expected in Hollywood that, you know, they're in power. You do what they want. And so there's a lot of predator-type people in, in Hollywood who are in positions of power um, taking advantage of the situation. And it's, it's a disgusting thing to, to men and women. To tie this to tie this back into we did the the video yesterday talking about the uh, the writers strike to tie it back into that and even looking at the Lawrence brothers doing their podcast and everything I think the best thing that can happen is that there the power is upended that there are options for people whether it's trying to get out of the casting couch situation like that that shouldn't end your career it's like okay fine mm -hmm. maybe the hollywood system won't hire me but there's there's another you know uh film industry out of you know minnesota or whatever like we talked about um being able to just walk away and go to another studio or something that's not in lockstep with all the other ones having options being able to make your own media make your own movies and not yes. having to play by those well, rules. Well, yeah, anymore. they didn't. They, yeah, they didn't play by the rules, and now they're you know some of them could maybe not be getting roles because of it. Yeah, and um, now they're doing a podcast and they're staying out there and they're telling people like, here's what it's really like. And I know there's I know there's actors in Hollywood who would not let their children. 
be actors. They refused. They said, when you're an adult, you can maybe go be an actor. But until then, you are not going anywhere near Hollywood because of the situations like the Lawrence brothers are talking about. Which, hey, if they ever want to talk more, they can come on here. You know, you're always I, welcome. Like I said, I actually enjoy it. And I've been listening off and on to some of these, because some of the celebrity podcasts are like, okay, when you get people like, Again, I like Conan O'Brien, but his show was just like, oh my god, this is like a huge Hollywood circle jerk. I can't. Well, mostly it's him talking about himself. Himself, right? Right. But like, I've been listening off and on to to Michael Rosenbaum's. Yeah, you really like that one. You bring it up a lot. He's he just seems like a like a legit like this is the kind of guy I would hang out with. He's just he's just Mm -hmm. a normal guy who happens to have friends in Hollywood, but they're not. Like his his circle friends are not like the Will Smith, the Jada Pinkett. You know, he's he's hanging with like you know the 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 geek crew and and he just seems like a like a, a normal guy. And Neon I Neon like, watches you all the time if you're listening, and I doubt you are. And he really really likes. I am him. not crushing but, on but not, Lex no, not in, a, in a platonic way. No, like he but actually seems like, like a pretty you, cool. You really dude, like you know? that show. I know you watch it all the time, and you watch him all the time. So if he ever hear if someone knows him, tell him that we enjoy. Well, I don't, but I never listen to it. But Neon enjoys your show immensely. <laughs> Well, no, because like he had the he had the Star Trek Next Gen crew, yes. in, and and most of those guys sounded like normal people. And well, so most people are normal people. That's just it. And the weird thing about this, and we learned this too, like doing conventions, right? And a lot of people talk about you know Hollywood. And they no, talk we about, never did anything in the, in, in the industry. You know, just whatever, ask Twitter, whatever. And everybody's like, oh, everybody's so political, whatever. They're all out of touch. Actually, it's weird. A lot of the people that have the political hot takes on Twitter in real life are not like that. Like people, yes. people don't understand. And I think this is where you kind of need to like sit down with somebody and have a conversation with them face to face because you can fire off a tweet and sound like the worst possible person in the world or it could be misread or inflection could be read. Into yeah, something. Internet's terrible for inflection. And and that's not actually what's going on. And in fact, that was like, you know, Marina Sirtis, you know, she's like going on like I'm going to rage quit, you know. She actually seems pretty normal. I mean, we saw her. We saw her at a convention one time. She seemed pretty upset. Nobody was at her table. Yeah. But I'm like, well, we've been backstage with, the, with these these guests as well, or been on stage with these guests as well as different events when we back when we were like yeah. doing con- cons and stuff. And a lot of them are really, really, really nice. And you know, they just are. Uh, George Takai, he's he's you know actually very. I mean, he has a lot of political hot takes, but in person. Everything, every indicator I've seen, he was at the one con we're at, is that he's actually pretty okay, you know? Except for, you know, the incident that it was. Well, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, so there's, I mean, this is what I'm trying to say is like, I think there there are a lot of layers unpack here. And I think what might actually happen as a result of all this upheaval and all this stuff coming out is. People need to keep coming out, for yeah. real. You do. Um, I think we're going to see kind of a reset of the entertainment industry and we're going to have people be a lot more real. And we're going to have people be a lot more real about the shit that happens to them. We need to be. You know. You can't, you can't, you can't fix something if it hides in the shadows. You need to put the light onto it. And I think that, you know, and I think as, as people that are the, that are the audience that, that, that watch these celebrities that, that you know, support these films, support these shows. You, if someone comes out and you think their claims are legitimate and they feel like they, they're authentic, you need to support them. You know, not because, you know, support a woman, but not a man. That's bullshit. Like Brandon Frazier should have got a lot more support than Brandon Frazier got. And before he came back, we were talking about what he said happened to him. And we were like, I wish he'd come back. We missed him. Go back to our old podcast. Before he came back, we were talking about that. And we're about what happened to him. And it's like people, you know, he kind of quit acting. I think a couple of reasons. One, he got injured pretty badly during the Mummy movies. Yeah. But also after that incident, he just like didn't want to be part of it because it was it was so upsetting to him. And now he's come back and, and won awards. And, you know, people needed to be supportive. And, you know, I understand that not everybody tells the truth. Yeah. <laughs> Amber Heard. Um, but... A lot of people do. And you're, you, why would you risk your entire career and the fact that you might not ever get cast again to tell the truth? You know, most people wouldn't. Yeah. Unless you're a drama queen. Most people would not do that. And I think the fact of the matter is that people, like, they'll lift up women and support them and, and circle around them and be like, yes, yes, protect them. But then when a man does it or comes out and says, hey, I've been, I've had something similar happen to me. I've been abused. This happened. That happened. And they're like, you know, crickets are just like, oh, come on, get over it. Just, you know, man up and move on. And there's, it, it's just as damning and upsetting to a man as it is to a woman. So we need to see more of this. People who have had experiences like this need to have the, the guts to stand up and say something because nothing's going to get changed if they don't say something. Yeah. So I, I yeah. So good luck, uh, Mr. Lawrence. I, I think it's pretty cool that he actually came out and said that. And 
But he yeah. didn't do it, and neither did. And Joey said he he walked away from similar situations because yeah. it wasn't worth their principles to 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 do that, and they lost out for it. But you know, a hundred percent, you know, credit to standing by your principles and then talking about it. Yeah. So we're gonna wrap this one up. Yes. All right. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.